Association on um, Leading the Way, Indigenous Peoples Partnership and Governance. Uh, welcome and thank you for coming to our sort of second session on a similar topic to this week. Uh, we have a very wide selection, both globally and everything of speakers and presentations for you today. And so welcome and uh, enjoy. So I will pass over to Tetui Chortland to welcome you in more properly than myself. Thank you. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, welcome everybody to World Water Week. I hope that you have all managed to enjoy the events. Uh, there have been several Indigenous related events and uh, this is our event on Indigenous-led partnerships. Uh, we're very fortunate to have speakers from all around the world who have uh, experience in uh, partnerships which are led by the community. Uh, for those of you that uh, may have your microphone on, please put that on mute unless you speak. And uh, I would like to say a quick prayer just to open us. Thank you. Could the possible support please mute everybody except for me? Is that possible? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, tai nei ki rongi a tato kato e te wairo o ngā mātou tūpuna nā rato i whakatō te ara hei hi koi mā tātou ngā uri i whakatō ki o tātou ngā kau ki ngā tikanga hei ara taki ngā ia tātou ki te hāpau wā tātou mahi katoa i rotu te punu te tika te maramatanga i te aroha o nō Te tahi ki te tahi, hara mai te toki, haumi, hui e, tai ki e. Kia ora everybody, thank you for that. For that. Uh, so today our program, we'll be starting with Willie Wright from the Integrated Kaipara Harbour Management Group. Uh, we will also be having uh, presentations from the Philippines, from Myanmar, Tanzania and Argentina, and it's my honour to introduce everybody as we go. Uh, we will also be having some poll questions, which David will talk about uh, next, and um, I really look forward to everybody's presentations at the end. We'll also have a breakout session, so from the summaries which David gives, We'll be able to have more discussions. So there'll be a breakout session for English speakers and a breakout session for Spanish speakers. In the meantime, please use the Interactio, I hope I said that right, um, app uh, that you can download for translations. Over to you, David Kilda. Hello. Oh, so yes, as I sort of mentioned at the very beginning of this uh, session, we had a, a similar session on the um, on Monday, and we asked for people to um, have a, a look at the um, to do some polls questions. Um, and I think actually they're really important, and I will go through them. So basically, you know, we actually ask participants in our first session, are you aware of Indigenous peoples in the country, region, or catchment that you're normally engaged with? And quite a heart, large proportion had some awareness of, of Indigenous peoples within their particular area that they were working. Um, they, we also asked some questions about your knowledge or experience in working with and partnering with Indigenous peoples. And quite a few had some previous experience. So that was really good to know. You know, suggests to us that there are people sort of having more linkage with different Indigenous peoples around the world. And it, but what was also really interesting was that it's predominantly at a local or community level, um, as you can see, 47% there of which tier of governance people were working in, and not as much at either the international or national level. And we think that there is some sort of, and especially, I guess, the catchment, where there's some room to sort of improve interactions and working with different groups around the world. Um, it was predominantly in terms of working around water or ecosystem governance, which is not particularly surprising given that this, the session that we are in today. Um, but there were quite a lot that work around land tenure, around human rights, around free prior and informed consent and things like that. Uh, interestingly, not a great deal around business development and not a great deal around infrastructure development. 
But finally, and probably most important for this session, is we actually asked some, um, you know, what were some of the general values that were raised by different groups, you know, when they work with Indigenous uh, peoples around the world. Um, it's quite small. These are just some of the examples. But I think it's quite important that, you know, there are things that came up, such as we did not explicitly discuss values. We sponsor people to come to World Water Week. There was a limited discussion there along the way. And I think this is a really important point to, to have a think about is today, how do we work with and how do we partner with Indigenous peoples and make it easier to, to, to develop good partnerships? And that's a lot of what today's session is about. So I will now pass it back to uh, Tui. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, that's really, uh, interesting, you know, often Indigenous issues around water can be cross-cutting, you know, because water sovereignty can be related to land sovereignty, and um, we often are expressing our rights when we're not an appropriate part of the decision-making. So I'm really looking forward to hearing more from my whanaunga, my um, we're, we're here in the same region, um, Willie Wright from the Integrated Kaipara Management Group. Um, they are restoring and protecting one of the largest harbours, which he's going to talk more about, and the life essence and the Modi in a cultural way um, of that harbour. So I welcome uh, the presentation. Thank you. Kia ora, thank you, Tui. You're good to go, Willie. Kia ora koutou. Next slide, please, David. <clears throat> Tangaro whakamana mana te maonga. Kaipra te moana. Waikaratu te marae. Te uria hau te hapu. Ngāti whātua te iwi. Hau mai wārangi te tūpana. Mahu kitarangi te waka. Ko wiramu rai taku ingoa. E te iwi nei, e hui nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā kata katoa. Good evening, everybody. My name, as um, Tui said, my name is Willie Wright. I am the Program Manager for the Integrated Kaipara Harbour Management Group. Um, next slide, please, David. The Kaipara Harbour is located in the southern part of the, uh, in the southern hemisphere. It is the largest harbour in the Southern Hemisphere and the second largest harbour on the planet. It has the largest um, estuarine ecosystem in New Zealand and, of course, the largest estuaries in the world. The catchment area of the Kaipara Harbour covers some 6,000 square kilometres and is Excuse located me, in, the north, in the northern you part of the... angles on the presentation. Sorry? The, Ka the, Ka the Kaipara Harbour is a major nursery to many fish species, including the great white and hammerhead sharks, and home to hundreds of thousands of migratory birds, including the endangered species like the fairy tern. Historically, it was prolific with many types of shellfish. However, uh, now that over many years, uh, the degradation and environmental impact on our waterways has, and consequently the harbour has almost destroyed. The biggest threat to our Kaipara is sedimentation, which is caused by erosion, land runoff of chemicals and effluent discharge. Next, David. Maori are the indigenous people of New Zealand who arrived by waka, or as you would know, canoe, over a thousand years ago. The Mahuhu Kitarangi. Waka is the main uh, canoe of Ngāti Whātua and is acknowledged to have entered and settled in the Kaipara Harbour and given rise to Kaipara Udi, or the family of the indigenous people of the Kaipara, who remain and still live here today. Māori take a holistic view, a holistic view on the environment and treat all forms of life as being connected with each other. Through our values, ethics and customs, we promote and actively manage a cohesive balance between people, land 
and water by using our cultural practices passed down to us by our, our ancestors. Maori see themselves as guardians or kaitiaki to the environment, ensuring that if our waterway, our land, our whenua and air are healthy, then our people are healthy also. Thank you, David. Abel Tasman was the first man that sighted New Zealand. That was back in 1642. But it was actually Captain James Cook who set uh, foot on New Zealand soils uh, in 1769. Colonisation and impact of the Euro uh, European migration began in and around the early part of the 18th century. The Kaipara Harbour and her environs held enormous forests of kauri trees and lumber, a resource that became valuable for sailing masts and building of homes. Our forests were cleared to give rise to pastoral farming and the timber was exported to all parts of the globe. Our harbour, rivers, waterways and lakes were bountiful of fish and shellfish which in time became commercial exploitation through colonial regulations and control. Thank you, David. So the Crown wanted to protect Maori. They drew up what we call a Treaty of Waitangi. And the Treaty of Waitangi was signed between the government of New Zealand at that time and Māori again signed in 1840. Basically, the Treaty of Waitangi offered, in essence, partnership, participation, and protection. Of course, following the signing of the treaty, successive governments and Crown agencies ignored the treaty. And that began to diminish, diminish and cast aside Maori and their rights as the Indigenous people of Aotearoa, New Zealand. They took away our language. They took away our cultural values, our land and family values through various law. Maori therefore became less than second, second class citizens within their own homeland. In 1975, the courts agreed that the Treaty of Waitangi was actually a legal document. So a treaty, the Waitangi Tribunal was established to hear Maori grievances and to record their grievances. Since and over a period of time, many treaty claims uh, dealing with Maori historical grievances have been settled with the Crown. And what that has meant today, that Maori are actually standing up, the Indigenous people of New Zealand are standing up and taking their rightful place as partners, as partners to Aotearoa. Thanks, David. <laughs> of course, since the signing of the treaty, uh, our land, our waterways have been grossly mismanaged by the colonial thinking and action. Our land and waterways have been sectioned off, pigeonholed, and compartmentalised by bureaucracy. The Kaipara Harbour and her waterways have been degraded to almost tipping point. Today, 700,000 tonnes, 700,000 tonnes of settlement enters the Kaipara Harbour and settles on the harbour floor. Siltation smother seagrass meadows, the habitat for juvenile fish, and is covering our shellfish beds with silt and mud. Thank you, David, next slide. So this is how the Integrated Kuiper um, uh, Management Group was formed. It was formed back in uh, 1996 because mana whenua, the indigenous people and the communities did not agree with the way the harbour was being managed. We set out our objectives 
and four basic principles, four very basic principles. And these principles were and are kaitiakitanga. What that means, we are guardians. We are guardians to our land and to our waters. Those who live within the area, they see the change, the environmental change, they are their guardians and they are the ones that make the big difference. Co-management, this is, this is important because this is where partnership comes into it. It's easy to build a relationship, but it's a lot harder to build trust. The Integrated Kuiper Harbour Management Group, we've been doing this for 25 years and it's taken us that long to build trust with our communities, government, crown agencies and the like. And of course, the third one is integrated ecosystem-based management. In other words, everything is connected. An ecosystem belongs in a whole and as a whole. And of course, our last principle is what we call manakitanga. Manakitanga is actually having respect for ourselves, having respect for everybody else, and having respect for their views and of their views. So after two decades of collective work and partnership, we convinced the government of New Zealand that our harbour needed urgent attention and they listened and they acted. Thanks, David. Now, this is an interesting slide. So on your left-hand side, you'll see that lady she is the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern. She was planting a plant at one of the farms when the government came and uh, announced that the Kaipara Harbour and her people and her communities have what they call an exemplar catchment. Thanks, David. So since then, the Kaipara Udi, Mana Whenua, have formed a co-governance with councils on behalf of the Crown. We have put together, and this, this program is the biggest of its kind ever in New Zealand, if not anywhere else. The program runs for 10 years to start with. But the, the purpose of the program is to heal the Kaipara Harbour. And we're going to do this by planting millions and millions of trees, riparian planting. We're going to be restoring wetlands, planting all our rivers, waterways, and the coastal margins, which comes to something like 8,000 kilometres of waterways to be fenced. We want to reduce the sedimentation by at least 50% and, and by doing that, and improve the biodiversity of our harbour. What's most important in this program is we're going to embed Mā Tauranga Māori. Mā Tauranga Māori is Māori knowledge and Māori practice. So all our projects and programs are based and will be embedded with Mā Tauranga Māori. In time to come, we hope to see our waterways, our streams and harbour clean and prosperous again. We want to witness our fish stocks improve, our shelf which beds replenished and become a more healthier and to see a healthy and productive Kuiper Harbour once again. And my closing statement here, thank you, David. Ko o to Kuiper, ko to Kuipera aho. I am the Kuiper and the Kuiper is me. Kia ora, thank you, Tui. Generally, uh, so many lessons and uh, such a long journey that um, uh, it's my pleasure to acknowledge all of you um, of Tūrio Ho and the Kaipara Harbour and everybody that has been a part of that project. Uh, you're such an inspiration. 
And I encourage uh, anyone that is online to and participating, you know, maybe uh, if you want to ask uh, um, Willie and Melissa uh, any questions in the chat, perhaps just a suggestion uh, while we continue with the presentations. Thank you so much. Um, the holistic nature and interconnectivity uh, is so important and uh, the community led projects of community values and community cultures. And uh, our next project uh, in the Philippines and Mindanao um, uh, uh, is a similar project in the Refile Spring Development. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Ronnie um, Organ. I'm gonna hand it straight over to you, Ronnie. Uh, I think the full amount of the time I'd like to spend um, with your video and, and your presentations and, and your questions um, that you have uh, answered for us um, and prepared. So, um, kia ora, uh, uh, Ronnie, over to you. Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, thank you. Uh, you good one. Uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. I am Roni Algan, uh, a Katatubong Tadurai of Barangay Rifau, Municipality of North Ubi, Magindanao, in Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao Barm. Ang region na ito ay isa sa mga pinaka disadvantage sa Pilipinas. Kami po ay galing sa isang komunidad ng Tribong Tadurai uh, na noong bago pa man dumating ang proyektong patubig ang ng International Labor Organization ay at pinunduhan ng Japan government ay hirap na hirap sa pag-access ng malinis at ligtas na tubig. I am I am proud to share with you uh, uh, with you po ang and shares sa inyo ang video na magpapakita ng aming karanasan bilang isang katutubong taduray na naging community contractors sa water project na bigay ng ILO Japan. Uh, tunghayan po natin ang aming kwento. Nga po si Ronnie Algan, isa sa mga namumuno sa Refour Spring Development. Ako ay isang katutubong Tadoray. Napakahirap yung daanan, almost 40 kilometers mula sa poblasyon ng Nuro Upi. Malaking pababago yun. Nung nagkakaroon na po tayo ng water resources, napadali yung kanilang pagkuha ng tubig dahil malapit sa tahanan, yung ating mga faucet, ating mga top stand. Mas malinis pa yung ating pagkukunang tubig. Tayo mismo, tayo mismo yung na-involved doon sa proyekto. Mismo po yung community yung nagtatrabaho. 100% namang katutubong tundura ito yung ating mga beneficiaries. Meron tayong 45 workers. Nabigyan sila ng PhilHealth, SSS, insurance. Napakalaking tulong po yung binigay nila na social protection sa ating mga worker. Sumunod po yung ating organization doon sa standard pasahod. Ang ating mga kababaihan ay natasan po natin sila sa frontliners pag kukuha ng ating temperatures, attendance ng ating mga workers sa construction site. Malaking pagkakaiba po sa ibang mga construction. Nagkakaroon ng consultation sa community. Nabuo tayo ng isang organization sa community na tawag natin na Refau Spring Development Association. Ang namuno, isang katutubong taduray. Malaki po yung pagkakilala ng mga katutubong taduray. Pagbigay nila ng proyekto. Nandyan na yung pagrespeto nila sa ating tribu. Kinikilala nila yung cultural belief ng mga katutubo. Girespeto nila yung aming mga traditional system kung paano namin i-manage yung aming proyekto. Bilang isang katutubong taduray, naniniwala kami sa aming mga kalupaan at katubigan na pinanalahanan ng mga espiritu. Sa spring na yan, talagang sagrado. Yun po yung ating nalalaman sa ating mga ninuno ating katubigan ay karugtong ng ating buhay. Pwede po natin itong magamit, panggamot ng ating mga balian bilang isang naninirahan sa bulubundukin ng Barangay Ripaw. 
At naging magpapasalamat kami sa project na patubig nagmumula sa ILO. Gumagawa tayo ng mga policy, tribal leaders, Team Y, Pintailan, BLGU, paano siya magiging masustain yung ating project na tuloy-tuloy ito na sa ating mga second generations. Isa sa mga traditional systems paano na masustain yung ating patubig is pagprotekta sa ating mga kalikasan. Pagbabawal ng mga pagputulong mga punong kahoy, pag-spray ng chemicals, pagsisigaw, at pagsunog ng mga kahoy. Kung kami lang medyo nahihirapan kami. Nagpapasalamat kami dahil kahit sa napakalayo yung at aming barangay, nabigyan kami ng pansin at nabigyan ng mga ganitong proyekto. Okay, thank you very much, Ronnie and David, for showing the video. Uh, this is Jen Aguinaldo, the uh, project manager of the ILO Japan Water Project in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. So um, we're going to know more about Ronnie and their experience as uh, indigenous people or the Tedurai in the project. So I have a few questions here for him so we can appreciate more. Uh, the the experience of the Tedurais in the project. So Ron, um, the first question is, can you please share with us how your cultural uh, beliefs or needs were considered, observed, and respected in the project? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, first, uh, uh, considered uh, the project uh, yung first yung consultations uh, with uh, tribal leaders uh, kakaroon tayo ng uh, rituals or kanduli dun sa ating water system project. Is that all, Ronnie? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so thank you. Um, we would also like to know how has your experience in terms of skills and lessons learned as a community contractor in the water project been useful in engaging with other people or other groups? Uh, yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Malaki po yung uh, uh, tulong uh, nagiging experience namin uh, tulad ng ako ay isang uh, uh, namuno, namuno sa isang proyekto. So malaki po yung nagiging uh, experience namin pagdating doon sa first yung papano i-deal yung pagkakaiba ng uh, uh, attitudes ng ating mga workers uh, at higit sa lahat yung papaano natin uh, pag-manage ng ating mga financial budgets and also uh, leadership uh, papaano natin uh, uh, paano natin magawa o masustain yung isang proyekto so pinakamalaking uh, challenge yun para sa akin so what I'm hearing from you, you've learned leadership and the skills uh, that you've learned from this project will hopefully I, I'm getting from you, uh, will help you um, in the future projects if you will receive any uh, additional projects or you're more confident now to handle um, uh, projects such as this in the future. Is that right, Ronnie? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, malaking tulong po yun para sa akin. Uh, upang uh, papaano ko po yun. Uh, Ma paano po tayo maka-engage or makipag-connections doon sa ating BLGU or local government unit? Uh, malaking uh, confidence yun. So parang umangat yung ating confidence na uh, makipag-communicate sa ibang organizations or ibang uh, unit or ibang uh, community para 
uh, mas madagdagan yung aming kaalaman upang uh, mas makatulong sa aming kapwa uh, katutubo. Thank you so much, Ron. And lastly, as a Tedurai, how are you going to take care of your environment resources to ensure the sustainability of your newly built water system? Yes, uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, first, uh, nakakaroon po kami ng one-year uh, one plan. So nakakaroon kami ng clean-up drive. Nakakaroon din kami ng mga plano na gumagawa ng palisya for sustainability ng ating water systems. Uh, pangatlo is uh, yung pagkakaroon namin ng biodiversity or uh, tree planting activities within the community or other barangays. Uh, if in case or kung sakali man ito ay pwede makatulong kami paano natin masustain yung ating uh, ating uh, natures uh, tulad sa aming mga katutubo ay close in natures yung tawag natin na ang tubig ay karugtong ng aming buhay. Uh, upang uh, matustusan namin yung aming uh, pangaraw-araw na pangangailangan. No? So yun ang pinakamalaking uh, uh, aral para sa mga katutubong taduray na nanirehan dito sa uh, municipality of Upi. So I'm proud to be at taduray. So marami salamat po sa Government of Japan sa binigay nila na proyekto para sa amin upang kami po ay mas uh, matikman namin yung mas malinis na uh, drinking water na niminsan ay hindi namin yun naranasan. So thank you very much sa International Labor Organization ay nagiging partner namin at nagiging, uh, nabigyan kami ng mas maliwanag o mas magandang uh, uh, paraan na para kami ay uh, mabigyan ng uh, pag-asa sa mga community ng mga katutubo. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Ronnie. And just for the information of everyone, um, north the, the barangay where uh, Ronnie lives is actually one of the remotest barangays in North UP in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. So BARM is uh, currently, after signing the peace agreement a few years ago, it's currently undergoing a transition. Uh, and hopefully, uh, tribes such as uh, the Tedurais, where Ronnie uh, is a part of, will be uh, one of those that will uh, be transitioned into uh, a better better life uh, in the future. So thank you very much. And over to you, Tui. Hilda, thank you so much uh, and supporting to the acknowledgements to the ILO and your support is, is shown throughout our event uh, today and big regards to the Indigenous peoples and the autonomous area of Mindanao. It's been my pleasure a lot to work in the Philippines in the past and with Indigenous organisations such as Teb Teba. I look forward to um, keeping in touch. And again, encourage everybody to communicate through the chats. I just jumped over to the World Water Week to our actual event page, and there are people there chatting and asking questions about previous uh, presentations. So please um, go over there and also uh, stay with us for Suamu, who will be presenting next. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce from uh, Kisan, from the Selwyn uh, Peace Park, uh, where they are demarcating communal lands for sacred sites and uh, sanctuaries. And uh, I welcome you today. Suamu, please. Um, be free to begin your presentation. So the video has been played first from, from Kisa. What are relational values of current indigenous communities in the Selwyn Peace Park. Water is life. It is the blood that flows through the veins of the world, nourishing plants, animals, and humans alike. We indigenous Korean have a traditional poem. 
পি বাকে থি প ক This can be translated as we who drink water must take care of the waters. We who eat from the land must take care of the land. Only when we maintain this balance will our well-being be sustained. In the Selwyn Peace Park, more than 60,000 strong indigenous Korean population hold this poem close to their hearts. Within the Peace Park, lush forest and mountains peak. Indigenous Korean live as a component of a larger ecosystem. Local communities view themselves as a part of nature and act not as its masters but as its stewards. For Indigenous Korean, the relationship with nature is reciprocal. If we take care of the nature environment, then it will take care of us in return. Thus, when we Korean talk about water, nature, and territory, we do not envision a bundle of rights. But rather, a burden of responsibilities. These responsibilities are deeply woven into the fabric of our daily lives and take on many forms. But they hold three key aspects. One, the responsibility to value our relationship with nature. Two, the responsibility to care for nature. And three, the responsibility to maintain balance. For indigenous Korean communities, nature is not inert. Instead, every river, mountain, and forest is home to Gaza spirits. Gaza are both guardians and messengers who protect nature and communicate its needs. In Korean tradition, the relationship between local communities and Gaza is a core component of governance. Water, land, and forest are important entities in Korean social, ecological, spiritual relation. And maintaining proper spiritual relations with nature is key to current environmental governance. A healthy environment gives the omusopo or well-being for both human beings as well as the deities of the land, forest, and waters. This understanding of well-being is not just for the current and future generations, but also for the afterlife. Communities thus hold the responsibility to value their relationship with nature. To remind people of this responsibility, lessons and stories are passed down from generation to generation through traditional Ta poetry. These Ta help communities remember the value of their relationship with nature, but they also teach about the reciprocal obligations that maintain this relationship. As a predominantly agrarian society, Indigenous Korean livelihoods are heavily influenced by the health of the environment. Local culture and social traditions are also deeply intertwined with the biodiversity in the local ancestral Go territories. As beneficiaries of nature, Korean communities also hold the responsibility to care for the nature. Local taboos, traditional rules and regulations, establish responsible use of local natural resources and protect vulnerable species and landscape areas. These taboos and the ta that teach about them are recorded and maintained by the Tipo Gogasa, a person or a group of people responsible for conducting ceremonies and communicating with local Gogasa spirits. Flowing through all of this and binding it together is water. Water ceremonies play a key role in annual harvest and planting seasons. And communities regularly meet on the banks of Gautulis, lakes and waterways to hold prayer ceremonies and celebrations. The health of local water systems play a significant role in the prosperity of local communities. And it is not uncommon for communities from several ancestral God territories to work together to sustainably govern ponds and waterways. This includes the creation of fish breeding zones and the institution of local rules and regulations on fishing, planting and clearly of certain trees and access to riparian areas based on seasons and natural life cycle of local wildlife. Korean communities use their indigenous knowledge developed over generations to pursue adaptable and sustainable livelihoods and aquaculture systems that promote a healthy natural environment. Thus, inland water sources and waterways both support livelihoods and promote good relations and effective cooperation between communities. These community activities are an example of the third aspect of their bundle of responsibilities, the responsibility to maintain balance.
Responsible use and sustainable livelihoods combined with conservation activities maintain a balanced ecosystem. This is in turn guided by the reciprocal obligations that maintain balance in the relationship between communities and local Gosa spirits. These activities also maintain balance in society, promoting cooperation between communities and creating a broader sense of solidarity. It is important to understand that for current communities, this bundle of responsibilities are not a burden. They represent a philosophy that values both nature and humanity equally and are the fundamental building blocks of indigenous Korean society. For the communities of the Selwyn Peace Park, their deep connection to and respect for nature has helped them survive in a territory that has been beset by more than 70 years of conflict. The waterways, mountains, and forests have given them shelter and food when they needed to flee, and have supported their well-being in times of relative stability. Korean indigenous people have demonstrated time and again that their connection to the natural world and gasa around them play a crucial role in the integrity of the forest, lands, and the water in their territories, and that through cooperation between communities, their way of life can comfortably maintain the mutual prosperity of natural world and humans living within it. The world faces a growing climate emergency. Our planets, waterways, and natural landscapes are increasingly being destroyed for profit, and biodiversity across large parts of the planet is disappearing rapidly. In these times of ecological crisis, IPLCs across the world, stewards of some of the strongest passions of biodiversity remaining, offer a different path. The relational values and customary contracts that humans share with nature play a pivotal role in the protection of natural world and the sustainable use of and care for water resources. It is time for these values to be reflected in the global agenda and for the rights, beliefs, and contributions of indigenous people to be appreciated and learned from. Is that back to me? Yes, I think Sierra will start speaking now while I prepare the next presentation. Sierra, are you on the line? Saw John, would you like to speak while yes. I get the, I share my screen? Yes, thank you, David. I'm ready. Yes, it's coming up now. I'm just, you can start speaking. Okay. So hello everyone. This is John from Kisan, Karen Environmental and Social Action Network. Uh, so thank you for the videos, David. Uh, but now together with my colleague, Samu, uh, uh, we'll be talking about Karen indigenous way of living with water, land, and forest in the Southern Peace Park. Um, uh, next, please. Uh, in this presentation, we will talk about the current relationship with nature, the challenges, and uh, indigenous resilience. Next, please. So like in, in the video, uh, for current people, water is life as it is connected to livelihood, culture, and belief systems, we believe that waters and lands have their guardian and custodians, uh, known as Kasa. So we have, uh, we have spiritual Kasa and human Kasa. So people to walk and take care of the lands and water, they need to respect and ask for the blessings from the spiritual Kasa. And uh, the human Kasa, known as Chipo Kogasa, is responsible to help people make offering to those uh, spirits. Next, please. Um, Karen indigenous leaders, uh, they share their knowledge through poems. And um, these three poems are example of Karen poems in managing water, land, and dealing with food security in times of crisis. 
next please. Uh, so now is to discuss the challenges. Here, I'd like to uh, invite my colleague, Samu. Samu, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to share the challenge in our areas, uh, especially with, uh, we talk about Salary Peace Park. So we indigenous Kran people face many challenges. Our struggle and suffer from civil war is more than 70 years till now. So let me tell you about the recent uh, happening in our areas. Uh, when we talk about the uh, challenges, uh, there's so many challenges already. So let me give you the example like uh, hydro dams in, uh, in Selwi Peace Park area. We call it uh, uh, Haji Dam. So uh, when we talk about the development projects, uh, when they plan to do some development, there will be so many conflicts in our areas, like uh, the uh, militarization. So uh, they try to, uh, the, we call uh, Burmese military, they try to expand their um, place to that area. So there will be a fighting broke out. So when the fighting broke out, uh, there will be uh, the people in, th in that area have to flee from uh, that area. So uh, you can see in this slideshow, uh, it's all related. So uh, as you know, right now, after the coup, there are more conflict in this area. Um, recently, uh, in March, there's an airstrike in that area. So, so many displaced people. We already have displaced people. They are now more than 70,000 70, displaced people are in that area. So um, there's so many problems with the people who have to flee from the jungle. So um, they have to face with uh, disease and uh, food, food and um, and what else? <laughs> so uh, here is like um, we we talk about the when you have to flee, there's a threat to the culture. We cannot uh, like practice our culture or uh, other things that we used to do, like uh, you see in the video because we, uh, we always have to hide. We are afraid of the, uh, the fighting. So there's a, the problem that our people are facing right now. And also the, the climate change is happening also in that area. And uh, late uh, 2020, we, we all know that about the COVID-19. So these, we can say that uh, the double trouble that uh, our people have to face is war and the disease. So um, this is the challenges that uh, we are facing now. But our people there are still um, struggle, as uh, we, we can say that. The, uh, but they still have a strong resilience uh, in that area. So uh, we can stay survive. So uh, right now we we can uh, we have. Um, like the military, uh, the Burmese military tried to expand their land to that area. So the fighting happened almost every day. And then also they are, they came with many different ways from the war away. And uh, they also walk. And also the, they try to threat the people like uh, they fly over. So people always have to live in fears. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Samu. Um, so now I like to talk about the resilient, how we the current people, you know, cope with these challenges. So we are governing our territory of life by empowering our governance institutions, mapping uh, and documentation of our customary land, uh, local taboos, 
values and histories in uh, defending our core customary uh, land and custodians and sustainable, uh, sustaining our livelihood practices. And next, please. Uh, so all these uh, initiatives that we just explained are done in the Salim Peace Park. Uh, in the Salim Peace Park as a territory of indigenous community. So it is situated in the current state of Myanmar, covers 1.6 million acres and collectively conserved and managed by 70,000 indigenous Karen people based on three key pillars. Uh, one, peace and self-determination. Second, environmental integrity. And the third is cultural survival. Next, please. Um, this diagram is an example of uh, our customary water, land, and forest management. Uh, the term GO is key in our customary system. GO is uh, both a physical space and a social system. Uh, the law, which is uh, shown in this diagram, is a meeting space or a platform for different community representatives, for elders to share knowledge to younger generation, for collective decision making, and the law is also part of conflict resolution mechanisms. Next, please. So these are photos of participatory land demarcation and mapping. We can see elder explaining traditional boundary and national landmark, uh, sorry, natural landmark and core customary land boundary mark. Uh, next, please. Uh, so uh, these are um, uh, community forest activities, traditional ceremonial defense, and also women-led biodiversity research. Next, please. Uh, this is our inland fishery management and conservation. We have 19 fish uh, conservation zones established and governed by uh, 24 communities already. Next, please. And uh, this is uh, the livelihood support, uh, women-led rice bank. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is uh, teaching culture resilient uh, in the Tanusala School in Salim Peace Park. Uh, this is for celebrating uh, World uh, Indigenous uh, Day uh, to jointly advocating for appropriate recognition of our Indigenous people as central land, uh, ICCAs, uh, territories of life. And also we have uh, every, uh, every year, March 14, we have a uh, celebration of International Day for Rivers and Actions Against Dams for equitable uh, governance of rivers and for cancellation of proposed dams on the Salmon Rivers. Uh, next, please. Yes, uh, I just already explained the March 14. Uh, so to conclude our presentation, we have three key points here. One is current indigenous relationship with water is intertwined with land and forests and is physically and spiritually deep into culture, our livelihood and our belief systems. And these values and practices are threatened by various factors as uh, discussed by my colleague, such as conflict, displacement and mega development projects. Uh, but the SPP is an initiative by indigenous people resilient toward a movement for peace, biocultural conservation, and a just future, and can be described as a living hope for our current and future generations. Next, please. Uh, so this is all for now. So please contact us if you want to learn more. Me and my colleague want to thank you for all your attention. Have a good day. Thank you. Kia ora, Sojan and Swamu, uh, the beautiful um, parts of having these events is that 
we can share in, uh, in your experiences in, uh, uh, of your peoples, of the Kalim peoples in Myanmar. And, uh, you know, it's amazing the ongoing conflicts that you've been, um, that you've been, growing through uh, with the Starwing Peace Park. You're, you're such an amazing example. And um, we all share everybody, uh, I believe, and, and giving our, our prayers and our support and our aroha out to you all. And I really do encourage everybody here in the event to connect and follow and support um, and I, I would definitely be looking, you know, more into your leadership and your example. So thank you so much. Thank you to everybody so far that has uh, been a part of the event. It's a pleasure to uh, head over to Africa, to Tanzania, uh, to our relations of the Northern Maasai. Uh, and having Samuel here at our event is um, an auspicious occasion too. So handing over to Samuel. Um, I hope you, you're ready and um, thank you for your presentation today. Kira. Are you there, Samuel? Um, I will start to, to share the, uh, the presentation that Samuel has got together just in case he was struggling to, to connect. So I will do that. And if he's there, he can speak to it at the um, end of the, the video. <laughs> Now, <laughs> Tolong dok nak jangan karena nak jengki fiyang. Wah, tolong ni siang tu monwan ni. Nah, ni jengki tu dije. Miji ada anda anak pun diginya. Tolong juga dia main main dia angkari. Tolong dok nak jangan kita ni angkara ni tu dije. Nah, ni jangan tu dije alam ni. Anda juga angkara minjau macam mo. Entah kuli angkari yak. Entah ribe mi tu jengki tu kita jengki kau ni ribe miar. Nana tu kita ni tanah pantai. Hemu dua sihir ke long kau jangan orang kariak anda balak ke lelu ke ke miar, amun itu dah lembang kariak. Orang rara orang kar, nak kaji kau ya, nari nuli letiman. Orang tepat di siang kare, ni nyanyi perta, orang kaji antara mana ni, naik sabu kulle. Amor ni nyanyi taro, orang beri siang antara mana ni, nak kuansa, egita alibi ni nyanyi kare. Orang berdua yang kari, ni dah libyan nama mana yang kari ni begini siode. Orang dah rapi edi esia iya mana ta. Ni mesti mian tu nama mana ta dewi ni mesti yang kari. Amok ya rai no long amaya naga maya ni ko na jiji ke grai dua agram mana un. Kaji dah kerana dulu lelu kele. Na garu seudi. Ada dia lari dua mana bisa noisi. Orang esia iya yang kari. Negeri Jabar mana saya yang kisui. Orang loh heboh la mana orang karya ni amat ada. Mana orang ni negeri dunia mana saya ni orang karya negeri dunia. Akeh ini yang dalam orang ini mila bawa ke orang manjat. Nung kisu. Ini lor buli. Melo miara. Orang ni orang kaji guna jiji kang. Orang muda ni negeri buli apa kata guna jiji. Orang mana saya. Mana mesti orang mana ni mana yang orang karya. Orde rana no naga ini nalaru naga rana lagaru. Nama nya urigi gilo lo lo sokuan. Ibu ini cuma rugua. Kejar dah gua orang kau najis orang kau yang kare. Nana rumah nana gua ok gigi nana kare ok ok. Nora ke bela lagu nana yang malu ni uli. Nana orang gigi gua sabar lagi orang rumah nana kau yang kare ini. Nana kau siapa juga nana kau yang kare uli yang kami tujuh aja bat. Tesi ayu arma asai. Kaji Julius. Lai lagaura. 
Ntoki naji enkare naa mee enkigura ena enkare. Mee ta maisha oltungani ake. Ntabaiki motonyi. Mpaka ngwesi. Ntoki inosete ntoki pooki. Ura kebe ala iya enkare ni agwe nyamali. Nema manyi manyate kwa nemeti ya enkare. Na ntoki di ngamultunga na kumo kesotu. Uye uwe enkare. Niyaku mkwapa kena tia nkare yewu na nababo ke. Kine vutuwa ninja loa wabako nari ya. Niki ndoki yoka hapo nwe nyapo. Kine vunye si yoke ndai nkara angu. Niki kwenye to nkara angu ambu nkare. Pe emi lotu waka nkara anu ta anta ya muu. Tene lotu mea tia nkwa nato yyo. Dele kino nara simbolu kwa hapo kinde ni yewu ni aseasa. Wote nori kiliwele le shoro. Nora le shoro dunia. Wante pati po oke. Nah, kalau nak bayar naik lagi lebih lang. Energi ni anak tu mesti tu nak lari kau keliru dunia. Biar tampu asin ni nyah haki yang kalau show jual orang masa. Ni ada apa haki ni? Ni ada haki orang kulubu, ni ada haki orang timi, ni ada haki orang mesi, ni ada haki orang kisu, ni ada orang kulubu. So say well, are you in the session today? Unfortunate. Would you like to just say a few words, um, uh, David, before uh, we move on? Just yes, acknowledging the last work, yeah, thank you. So, so Samuel has been participating in a, a report being put together by the Water Governance Facility and has sort of prepared a, a sort of intervention within our sort of report, which is sort of due out later on this year, which talks about all the different uh, elements of Maasai values, the importance and the role of Maasai in ensuring that the water is there for not just the people, but for all the animals and the ecosystems and taking that responsibility quite strongly. Um, as you can imagine, there is not always the easiest uh, sort of internet connection in some parts of, of their territory. And we've had some trouble sometimes having some, some things, but I was hoping he would be on here today and we were talking just before. So um, yeah, it's it's been a pleasure working with uh, Samuel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kia ora, David. Yes, and um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Sam Wells' work as well, and um, the Northern Maasai uh, peoples are often to a uh, inspiration. And uh, his details are over there in the World Water Week event page. And I also see there are people asking questions. Thank you, Janina, for asking uh, Ronnie, I think, and Jen about uh, Mindanao uh, and the local knowledge management and maybe some of the difficulties. So these also will come up in the breakout session. But yes, everybody engaged. That's great. And next, I'd like to introduce uh, so moving on from Water Wisdom, introduce Maria Teresa from the International Labour Organization, uh, working in the in Argentina with the Guarani community who are living uh, with their traditional livelihoods and their spiritual connections to their community in uh, Mother Earth. So uh, looking forward to hear more about that. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much, Tim. Yes, uh, I just wanted to introduce something important. The International Labor Organization holds the institutional responsibility for conventions 169 and 107, which are the only bidding treaties specifically dedicated to indigenous and tribal peoples securing their rights. 
Moreover, as a member of the UN Water, uh, it promotes the inclusive governance of water supply and sanitation at the community level with focus on indigenous communities and women through employment intensive investment projects and capacity building. Uh, essentially, through the local resource based approach, recognizes and promotes indigenous knowledge, values, and traditions, and explores local skills and technology to increase vulnerable people's participation in society and develop local assets and skills. As it was reflected in the previous Philippines project and now in the Argentinian project, uh, is going to be uh, demonstrated on. I, I pass now the, um, to my colleague, Matias, who is going to present the Argentinian case. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Teresa. Hello, everyone. I just want to say a few words only before the video, Thank you, David. Um, well, first of all, uh, as David said, also in Argentina, in Misiones, that's the place where the community, the Guarani community uh, lives, they have a hard time with connection. And so that's why they are not able to be here. Um, telling that this is the experience that links the work of the community with the National Institute in Agriculture Technology that works with the community, has been working with the community for more than 20 years now. And the Institute tried to develop and to help the communities to lead with a proper access and also a proper storage of water. There are many um, challenges for the communities to keep working and keep uh, living the way their traditions uh, are said because of the many um, other productions that are uh, within the, their environment. So uh, I think that the video uh, shows this in a better way that I can say it. So uh, I, I just leave you with the video. Thank you. En Argentina y el mundo, las comunidades de pueblos originarios viven en territorios con importantes cuencas hidrográficas, torres de agua y lugares de increíble biodiversidad. Sin embargo, pocas veces sus saberes son considerados a la hora de pensar y desarrollar acciones para la gestión del agua. En Argentina, el Instituto Nacional de Tecnología Agropecuaria Hace más de 20 años que genera, adapta, rescata y valida tecnologías apropiadas para el desarrollo sostenible de la agricultura familiar, campesina e indígena con la participación plena de las comunidades. Junto con la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, se desarrollan distintas acciones para la promoción del trabajo decente en las áreas rurales tales como el análisis de los efectos de la implementación de tecnologías de acceso al agua en la organización del trabajo de la agricultura familiar. Un caso de mejora en la calidad de vida mediante la gestión de proyectos vinculados al agua es el de la comunidad en Guaraní Tecoa Arapotí. Sus integrantes habitan el paraje Tordería, Colonia El Progreso, ubicado en el municipio de Colonia Aurora, Misiones. Esta población originaria ocupa 78 hectáreas que, en calidad de propiedad comunitaria, son utilizadas para desarrollar agricultura, artesanías, granja y trabajo rural. El INTA comenzó a trabajar en el año 1998 con la comunidad, acompañando la producción de huertas, cultivos anuales, frutales y granjas. En el año 2018 se llevó adelante un proyecto especial para el abastecimiento de agua y energía eléctrica en toda la población. Con el apoyo de mujeres y hombres de la comunidad, se realizó un pozo perforado con instalación de red de agua hasta las viviendas. También se instaló el tendido de red eléctrica en toda la comunidad. Las voces y el testimonio de los protagonistas 
cuentan la historia en primera persona. Mi nombre es Eliseo Méndez. Yo vivo 28 años, desde 19, eh, 1993. ¿Cuál es el nombre de esta comunidad? Teco Arapotí. Arapotí. ¿Qué significa Arapotí? Teco Arapotí significa es flor de primavera. Creo que el tema de agua y acá también era, por más que más tenía problemas de agua, y está todo desmontado ya, no hay, no hay monte suficiente como para eso. Y ahí a veces se escasa agua. Como ese, ese río también a veces ya de, no era como antes, no, no tiene peso como antes. Agua natural, no ve que ya, ya viene mucho veneno de, de arriba para abajo. Hay muchas plantaciones de tabaco y ahí se perjudica un poco también los ríos, los arroyos, los vertientes. Se, se contamina todo. Nosotros habíamos tenido un, en nuestra costumbre un, un agua, un vertiente, un pocito de agua que sacamos con balde, con, y tenemos todavía donde quedó esa una historia, o sea, nuestro, nuestro agua que sacamos de, de pocito, tenemos todavía guardado, tenemos todavía allá abajo, y después nos llegó un, un proyecto y ahí hicimos un mejoramiento de pozo de agua allá arriba, donde se también mejoró mucho para la comunidad. Y con sequía mucho tenía problemas de agua, porque tenemos solo un pocito de agua. Era ahí. Y ahora con ese eh, pozo eh, perforado mejoró mucho, porque nos falta agua para los chicos, para en verano nos falta nada. Hasta ahora, desde que empezó el, ese agua, nu nunca faltó agua. Gracias a Dios que salió el proyecto, por eso tenemos, tenemos canilla, eh, puso perforado también el proyecto. Eh, luchamos, mi papá acá luchó para conseguir esto y, y ahora tenemos. Antes lavaba ropa en el arroyo, llevaba un montón de ropa en el arroyo para lavar y ahora que, que se hicieron todas las, las canillas y tengo un, un techito para aparte para lavar ropa que viene por la canilla. Antes, antes no, no era así. Antes con ese frío íbamos al arroyo para lavar la ropa. Para cocinar también es mucho más fácil porque uno, uno queda sola en casa y después ya, ya, ya se puede encargarse de todo porque tener una canilla cerquita y de poder encargarte de todo para la cocina, para cocinar y no hace falta que estés gritando para los chicos, vení y trae agua para mí, viste que antes era así. El mismo gobierno debe escuchar la palabra eh, de los caciques, de los ancianos, que es lo que necesita, que se puede mejorar también para para cuidar más montes eh, en, to, en, en, en todas las comunidades, no solo acá, también porque todo necesita valor. Y ahí de, de, depende del gobierno, se puede mejorar, se puede escuchar las palabras, que se puede escuchar los, los reclamos para mejorar también la calidad de vida de cada comunidad. Hoy los pueblos originarios siguen consolidando y honrando un vínculo especial con la tierra y sus recursos. Los valores de los pueblos originarios como la comunidad Enviá Guaraní Tecoá Arapotí son un faro que puede guiarnos en la relación con la naturaleza y sus recursos.
Many thanks, David, for, for the presentation. And well, I, I hope that in the breakout rooms we can uh, exchange a dialogue with uh, if there is any other uh, doubt or, or situation about this experience. Thank you, Omar. Um, I'll just sort of step in here for a moment. Unfortunately, due to time, uh, we won't be having a breakout session. There's approximately eight minutes left in the session. Um, we made the decision early on in the piece that there was a, a couple of presentations which had been due to happen on the Monday session and that we that weren't able to come because they hadn't arrived on time due to internet connections. So we made this sort of decision that it's good to have their voices being heard as the most important thing. Um, I would put uh, people's attentions to the polls. In, there's a poll questions in the Pathable website. Um, it's about talking a little bit about how do you start to partner with different indigenous groups? Uh, what are the challenges? What are the barriers? It'd be great if people could um, could sort of fill that out. But once again, I'd like to apologize for this happening. But in the end, we made the decision. It's much better to have voices being heard than otherwise. And so I would like to head back to, to Tui. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, everybody, for sharing the richness of your uh, work that you're all doing. And uh, this is such important work. Uh, I hope that we can maintain um, our connectivity and our sharing. I think there's so much that we can all learn from one another uh, as we aspire to uh, value and have our responsibilities and care for Mother Earth, uh, as all of our previous speakers have said. Uh, I'd also like to check whether Willie is still online because we had asked him to make the final, final words. And in the meantime, I've, I've asked Jen and um, hopefully Ronnie got the message too, if they could answer the question, um, if they could answer a question just uh, before we wrap up as well. And that question is from our event page. It was asked by Janina Moss. No, sorry, so sorry if that's mispronouncing it. Ronnie and Jen, thanks so much for the insight into the project. And how far was it possible to include local knowledge on water management into the project planning and implementation? What difficulties arose? So if uh, one of you could please answer that in, uh, in the next five, you know, a few minutes, and then we'll ask uh, Willie to close. Thank you so much. Hello, Tui. Thank you for that question. I think Ronnie or I can can, can answer the question, but maybe I can start it. Um, uh, since from the beginning of the project, we have been very careful in considering the, uh, the rights and the cultural beliefs of the indigenous people where we work in. So we, we do have a pre-feasibility study and we consider like we, we, we also do community consultations with them because they know better uh, than we do not. So they, they map out where the, stats, the tap stand should be located, what, which water sources uh, should be tapped, and what, uh, what rituals need, uh, need to be done. Uh, they have been heavily uh, involved in also um, in, in, in deciding uh, the, the, the type of water system that will be built in, in their communities. Uh, for challenges, I think it would be good to, for Ronnie to, to share with us his challenges uh, in implementing the project. Ron, uh, I can um, share. Yes. Uh, thank you, ma'am. So first, uh, my experience to how to uh implement the water project from the ILO and Japan government. First the consultations of by our tribal leaders and also the local government unit of uh, uh, Barangay Rifau. Then also I considered uh, also the Katutubung traditions of the Timway leaders, uh, Belian leaders, or spiritual leaders. So, yan po yung nagiging uh, considered ng uh, ating uh, partner or 
ILO na so thanks na nagpapasalamat kami na binigyan ng pansin or binigyan ng halaga yung aming mga traditions uh, doon sa pag-implement ng ating water system. Uh, then, uh, yung challenges na na-encounter namin is uh, papano namin i-deal yung bawat isa, yung different attitudes of the communities or uh, our uh, tribes. Uh, dahil uh, may mga uh, uh, attitudes kami na uh, very sensitive. No? So sensitive and uh, close in nature also. Uh, 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 culture. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much, Ronnie. Uh, just please allow me to uh, explain further what he said uh, because he was speaking in Filipino. Um, first, he said he was very grateful that uh, a remote barangay uh, such as Barangay Ritao was given a project such as this. Uh, it is their first time uh, to be engaged as a community contractor. So it brought a lot about a lot of challenges. Uh, um, some of the workers, since it's their first time, they weren't really so familiar with how community contracting uh, works. So, for example, I understand uh, from the stories of, of Ronnie, uh, some of the workers got so excited to work immediately on the first day because they, it's like their first time to work on it. So it, it caused a lot of challenges, uh, you know, letting them understand that there is a process that needs to be uh, followed. So what Droni and the group did was they did uh, a lot of community consultations involving not only the tribal leaders, but also the local government units to help him as president of the community contractor to solve the problem in, in their community. Uh, he's also very happy uh, that their cultural beliefs and uh, practices uh, were respected all throughout the implementation of the project. So as explained earlier by Maria, we, we employ local resource-based approaches in, in, in the project. So that's why it's very important for us that the community themselves, in this case, the Tedurai community, uh, are engaged uh, in, in constructing the, the water system and not just in the construction process, but uh, even in the designing phase and even in the pre-feasibility study. So one of the items or one of the parts of our pre-feasibility studies include a environmental and social um, aspects wherein we check where the sacred places are and we, we consult them where they, we, we should be uh, laying the pipes or where should, we should be um, putting the, what they call this, the the tap the tap stance. So yeah. Nice. Thank you so much. Um, yes, and um, I'll thank you so much for answering that question. I think it all ties in everything uh, lovely. And I see that our um, Willie Willie Wright is here with us and uh, can honor us all with closing our event. Thank you all again. Kilda Rock Willie. Uh, kia ora, and thank you to you all. I want to say one thing I've, I've, I've felt in my heart with all the presenters from different parts of the planet, that we are connected together with our whenua, our waters, our animals, and, 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 and we have the same aroha love for how we are and who we are. With that, I just want to thank you all. I would like to close this session with a with a prayer, karakia. So if I could do that, uh, kia inoi tato, let us pray. Kia to, kia tata kato. Tatafai o tato araki, a huhu karaiti, meta aroha o ta atua, meta fifa in tahitanga, kita waru tapu, ake, 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 ameni. Kia ora, thank you. Thanks, Toei. Thanks, Willie. Thanks, all.